Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, let's wait for uh, two more minutes uh, until all the dignitaries join the session. We'll start in two minutes.
sir rajin sir can we start rajin sir hello can we start dr sir will join no yes okay. sir hello hello good afternoon good afternoon sir hello hello Sir, can we start? Uh, yes, sir, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gurukar sir is uh, traveling. I have informed him. Okay, okay. So he may join, no? So we will start. Okay, Ragi, we can start. Good afternoon. So thank you all for registering and attending this 70 national level online faculty development program on outcome based education and essential AI tools for teachers, which is being organized by the internal quality assurance cell of Carmel College Autonomous Mala Trishur in association with the Kerala State Higher Education Council. So we would like to welcome Dr. Rajan Gurukal, Vice Chairman, Kerala State Higher Education Council, Dr. Rajan Varkis, Member Secretary, Kerala State Higher Education Council, Dr. Sister Kochitresa KP, Principal Carmel College, Dr. Suresh Nambudri, founder member, Aspire Technologies, Pune, Dr. Sunil Job K, Anjay's professor, Marian College, Kutikanam, Atanas, Dr. Mendes Jacob, director, PG Department of Computer Applications of Marian College, and all the FDP resource persons, managers, directors, principals, vice principals, representatives from management, HODs, IQAC coordinators, and all the faculty members. So, First of all, about this FDP, this will be a seven day program with live sessions held at the same time from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So the same link will be used for all the seven days. Uh, if you are unable to attend a live session for any reason, recorded sessions will be accessible on the learning management system that is LMS on the next day. So if you have any trouble in attending the online session, you could join the YouTube live session in the link uh, given in the chat. So all participants who have paid the processing fee will receive access to the learning management system, video recording for all the days and a participation certificate through the LMS. So please remember that only those who have made the payment will be able to avail LMS access and receive a completion certificate. Others can attend only the online sessions for free. So if you haven't made the payment yet, Kindly ensure the payment of rupees 500 uh, is being done using the account details provided in the chat. So my name is Rakhi Raj. I'm a business analyst at IPSR. I'll be the moderator for this event. So about Kerala State Higher Education Council. Kerala State Higher Education Council is the principal higher education policy input provider and a trendsetter of the state of Kerala and it strives to bring about equity and excellence in the higher education sector. So the council is an apex level statutory body instituted under the Kerala State Higher Education Council Act 2007 and the Kerala State Higher Education Council Amendment Act 2018 of the state legislature of Kerala. So perceiving its democratic structure and participatory approach in making decisions, the council is often denominated as a mandated working collective of all the stakeholders of the higher education sectors, including academics, administrators, and students. About Carmel College, Autonomous Mala. College in Mala under the University of Calicut. So it's a residential women's college committed to empowering through education, offering diverse they could see okay so the college this dedication has earned a grade accreditation through NAC cycles 
showcasing its commitment to academic excellence and community engagement. So now I would request all of you, if possible, could you all turn on your videos as we would like to take a screenshot for the documentation purpose. So I request all of you to turn on your videos. Thank you. Now, uh, for the welcome speech, I request uh, Principal Dr. Sister Kochitresa of Kamal College, Autonomous Mala Trishur. So, I am pleased to introduce Dr. Sister Kochitresa, uh, KP, currently the principal in charge at Kamal College, Autonomous Mala. With an extensive 26 year teaching career in botany, she guides both UG and PG students mentors researchers since 2018 and has 12 national and international research publications. She has presented 11 papers, served as NSS program officer for seven years and held various coordinating roles. Notably, she was vice principal and staff advisor from 2020 to 2023, showcasing her commitment to holistic education. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Sister Fachit Raisya, KP, currently the principal in charge at Kalma College Autonomous. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Distinguished guests, speakers, and participants, a very good afternoon to all. As we all know, outcome based education, OBE, is an approach that focuses on defining specific learning outcomes or objectives that the students should achieve by the end of the course or program. It is important for both faculty and students as it is provides clear guidelines for teaching and learning, promotes accountability, aligns educational goals with real world skills and enhances the overall quality of education. For faculty, OBE helps in designing effective curriculum, assessment, and teaching strategies. For students, it offers a transparent understanding of what they need to learn and how it benefits them in their careers. It is against this background that Carmel College Autonomous is conducting this seven-day FTP. We really hope that the participants are able to see themselves as better equipped to facilitate the learning process of this of their students. We have with us today Dr. Rajan Vargi, sir, Member Secretary, Kerala State Higher Education Council, who will be presiding over today's inaugural session. Dr. Rajan has been a former familiar face in their dis uh, discussions, meetings, and deliberations on the implementation of NEP 2020 and also changing role in the State Higher Education Council. Acknowledging your efforts on behalf of Carmel College Autonomous and all present here, I heartily welcome you, sir. We are very happy and honored to have the presence of Dr. Rajan Gurukul, Vice Chairman, Kerala State Higher Education Council with us. Dr. Rajan Gurukul, a renowned writer, academicians, we are spearheading the activities of the Higher Education Council during this transition period. He is definitely the most apt person to inaugurate this uh, FDP program. His experience and expertise is sure to keep us in good stead. On behalf of Carmel Fraternity and all present here, I extend a warm welcome to you, sir. We are greatly honored to associate with us the Dr. Mendes Jacob, CEO of IPSR Solutions Limited and the Director of MCA, Marian College, Puttikanam Autonomous. In the conduct of this FDP program, hearty welcome to you, sir. 
we also extend our warm welcome into our resource persons who will be handling the sessions dr sunil jo and dr suresh nambudri hearty welcome to you sir a warm welcome to you uh, to mr jaymon uh, senior manager ipsr for all the uh, supports rendered throughout welcome you sir this seven day fdp has been initiated by the iqac of carmel college autonomous appreciating the efforts of the entire team i hearty welcome to our iqac coordinator ms mary philip to this program the participants of this F fdp program are the reason behind this event it is our commitment it is your commitment towards improving and excelling your endeavors that brought you are here welcoming you all the, to this program we hope that you are able to meet your expectation thank you thank you very much thank you ma'am now for the presidential address i welcome dr rajan varkis member secretary of kerala state higher education council dr rajan varkis is a former pro vice chancellor of mahatma gandhi university kottayam and has played a key role in the education sector of kerala i welcome you sir good afternoon can you hear me so uh, you are audible okay okay uh, the principal of the college uh, dr sister pochitresia uh, professor rajan gurikal sir dr mendes jacob Uh, Ms. Mary Philip, IQC coordinator, and dear participants, the State Higher Education Council is very much uh, privileged to associate with Carmel College Autonomous Mala in this uh, in joining this national level online FPP program on outcome-based education and AI tools. actually council was in the forefront of initiating several important academic reforms in this state so among them we are giving more importance to this outcome based education actually in the council we have the faculty development center the center has been organizing training programs for our teachers in the online education in outcome based education in induction training programs and various aspect of teaching learning and research in the state and outcome based education and its training started way back in 2018 in fact there was some amount of opposition to this idea of outcome based education among the academic circles or teachers in the state they have their own justifications at that time today that stage is over and almost all institutions and the entire academic community in the state they are trying to acquire the skill that is required to meet the challenges of modern higher education and the council has already published handbook for the teachers and other practitioners in higher education with regard to outcome based education one exclusively for the engineering stream and the other for the general stream and our sessions were led by dr nj rao of the indian institute of science bangalore he has been a major source of support academic support for the council in developing this scheme and in publishing this handbook and as we know there is tremendous changes in science and technology and this has impacted pedagogic strategies and all this has opened up enormous possibilities for students and teachers to make use of it but some important questions continue to haunt the educational system everywhere 
hardly any breakthrough has been achieved with regard to teaching or how to learn a slightly altered version of earlier rote learning which compels students to reproduce whatever is conveyed to them by their teachers remains still valid students have to learn what the system or teachers as representatives of the system choose to teach them and at the end of such educational transactions they have to face a test set by the very same system there is no scope for students to frame their questions or exercise their freedom to ask questions in their own way portions of the syllabus for any academic program require rethinking against the background of changing changes occur occurring in the society as well as at the level of knowledge attained in the domain concerned often many things already learned reoccur at higher stages not only adding to the familiarity but also rendering it obsolete rather than letting the students unlearn the same some lessons indiscriminately passed on to higher levels impede the process of learning by turning it into mere memorizing understanding ceases with the precedence of remembrance over it such aberration should never happen in a very serious and sensitive area of human endeavor like education that such a situation prevails in spite of technological advances providing for effective ways of teaching how to learn systematically by unlearning is an issue quite frustrating even today this is one of the most important problems that the world higher education encounter in the wake of the techno economic globalization that shakes the core of the production of knowledge it is a fact that exponential rate of so called knowledge production has shot up immensely high but a major part of such knowledge is mere information as a result transmission of knowledge has become all the more mechanical and alienating naturally the quality of teaching and learning has become poor naming this kind of inappropriate production and transaction of knowledge as education is being questioned very seriously today teaching how to learn and deepening learning through systematic unlearning how to be made an inevitable constituent of quality assurance in this context outcome based education has been gaining emphasis especially with its uh, quality benchmark ob is based upon an educational theory which integrates every aspect of educational system with a set of outcomes outcomes are presented as items which should inevitably be attained by every student at the end of his or her educational experience obe insists upon determination of learning outcomes as the first step in course designing outcomes which are decided upon to devolve out of content structure instructional strategies learning experiences method of evaluation and assessment at different levels of higher education each course should have its own expected outcomes explained logically through a linked process which can be defended as to its ability to produce graduates with predetermined outcomes the the desirability of the whole course can be prejudged before its implementation by the by its ob objectives namely the outcomes and how they can be achieved through a several steps contained in the process so you have very elaborate system or methodology that is developed with regard to outcome based education now at this stage dr mendes jacob and his team they are trying to integrate 
the emerging technology, especially AI, into the teaching learning process. And they have already conducted four or five training programs in association with the Kerala State Higher Education Council in this field. So integrating technology, especially AI, with the outcome-based education will be a revolutionary step in a sense. It's a path-breaking step as far as the uh, teaching learning process in the state is concerned. This will definitely improve the quality of teaching learning and report sh shows that the state of Kerala is ahead of other states, especially in the matter of organizing outcome-based education related training programs. So uh, I, at this stage, uh, request all the faculty to associate with various educational initiatives of the state of the higher education council and we are prepared to give all academic help to the individual teachers and institutions for improving the quality of teaching and learning in your institution or in your domain of knowledge so we speak of technological advancement what is required today urgently is redefining the role of teachers. We used to speak about smart classroom, but what is required today is smart teachers. The teachers, they have to acquire the art and science of the new pedagogy, especially related to outcome-based education. So the use of AI will definitely provide additional tools or a, a new dimension to the whole process. So once again, I thank the uh, organizers of this program, the uh, principal and teachers of Carmel College, Mala, and also I am very much thankful to Dr. Mendes, J J uh, Mendes Jacob, who has been in the forefront of imparting this training program to a large number of teachers in our state, especially with the uh, in association with the Kerala State Higher Education Council. So I wish all the success for the program and thank you very much. Uh, I request Arjun Vaughi sir uh, to inaugurate this session. So uh, Gurukal sir is actually traveling. Uh, he is fr moving from Tiruvannamalai to Kochi. So he is not in a position to join now and on behalf of the council. I, I inaugurate this uh, national level online FDP program on OBE. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now uh, for the introductory remarks, I welcome Dr. Mendes Jacob, Director, NCA, Marian College, Kutikanam, Autonomous. Dr. Mendes Jacob is an academician and an entrepreneur with 35 plus years of experience and is a former director of School of Applicable Mathematics, MG University. He is also the CEO of IPSR Solutions Limited, an IT company supporting higher education institutions in the implementation of outcome-based education and innovative teaching, learning and assessment strategies. I welcome you, sir. Thank you, Raji. Um, most respected uh, Rajamurgi, sir. Reverend Sister Kuchitresi, the principal of uh, Carmel College, Mala. Ms. Mary Philip, the IQC coordinator. Most respected faculty members from all the institutions who are joined for this uh, program. And good afternoon, all. So, I am here to give an introduction about the flow of this FTP, how the sections are arranged and uh, uh, what are there in uh, in the learning management system for you. So I'll give you a brief explanation about the flow. We have around 2,500 participants registered for this event from almost all the states of India. And some of them are attending the session through YouTube live and some of them may not be joining the live sessions, but they will get the recorded sessions. 
So I hope the interactions will definitely benefit each one of us in implementing innovative teaching, learning, and assessment strategies to strengthen our OB implementation process. I hope most of the institutions may have started the OB implementation, but uh, we have to refine it whenever we meet the academy, uh, the academicians. So their uh, opinion that we need to do a lot of things to refine our OB implementation. All the resource persons of this faculty development program are well experienced, not only in the academies, most of them have immense practical experience in the industry and also at the consultancy level. People from industry have more idea about the skills acquired by students because they are interviewing the freshers. I hope the inputs from the industry will definitely help us. We have the learning manual system, which is provided to the participants. This is an example of how online platforms can be effectively used for a proper OB implementation. We have utilized the features like a workshop, which is used for learning and assessment, lesson activity where assured learning and assessment is happening. And there are also forums for collaboration. Other tools like Mentimeter, Padlet, etc., they are also incorporated to get an idea for the participants. Around 50% of the topics are covered through live sections and the remaining 50% through LMS, where we can have the task and assignments so that every participant will get a hands-on experience. The participants can learn in their own pace without disturbing their schedules and the LMS access will be extended to another 10 days after the live sections, after the completion of this seven day program. Even if the participants cannot attend the live sections because of their schedule, uh, tight schedule or, or uh, something like that, uh, recordings are available through LMS. Uh, Kerala State Higher Education is encouraging the higher education institutions, uh, especially in the state of Kerala, for the implementation of online education through platforms like Moodle. We have conducted a lot of training for the KSHC uh, for implementing Moodle in the higher education institutions. For this program also, they are extending full support. So I take this opportunity to express our sincere gratitude to Gurukul sir and Rajim Vargi sir for their valuable presence and encouragement. Now I will share uh, my screen. I will just go through the learning manual system. Uh, just to give you an idea how it will be working. This is the LMS provided to all the participants. There are uh, details about sections, joining link and everything. And there's a doubt clearance forum where you can uh, post your doubts so that uh, even the, uh, the participants, you can uh, uh, have a discussion. And there is a research forum where uh, you can uh, give some description about some AI tools because there are a lot of AI tools available now. So, uh, some good AI tools for uh, education, you can post it there and you can just give an, a, a small description about that so that every participant will get benefit out of it. So, today is day one. We have a, uh, the inaugural session. After that, uh, there is a section on Bloom's taxonomy and the video, everything is available. And uh, we have a, a task called a lesson activity, which is included there so that you will get a video. There are some objective type questions. You can answer that and uh, you can complete that task and assignment. Uh, if you are not getting time today, definitely uh, you can complete the task and assignments after maybe after two or three days or before the end of the, uh, the sessions, uh, you may be able to complete it. Even you can use the, utilize the holidays in between. So there are some other activities also. Uh, the resource person, uh, Dr. Sunil Chow, will explain the task for today. And every day you will have uh, different topics and uh, there is a workshop activity for tomorrow where you can design your course outcome or you can revisit your already designed course outcomes. This is a workshop activity so that you can upload your course outcomes and uh, your peers, the other participants can evaluate it. That is also a part of uh, implement, uh, that is a, an OB approach, you know. Uh, because you are, when you are evaluating the, ass the ass assignments of other uh, participants, you will be learning more. And uh, from day three, uh, again, day three, we have uh, the attainment calculation, uh, the analytics uh, useful for accreditation, uh, many things related to 
uh, OB uh, attainment calculation will be there, mapping of outcomes, etc. There will be task and assignments from day four onwards, day four, day five, and day six. You will have uh, the chat GPT and AI tools for educators. So, three days we have those sessions, and uh, <coughs> definitely there are a lot of AI tools or chat, uh, when we use chat GPT. Uh, you can reduce your workload and you can identify innovative teaching, learning, assessment strategies through these AI tools. So we will cover most of the cases. We have identified 100 plus use cases for uh, teachers uh, if you want to use ChatGPT and AI tools. So we will be listing all these tools, everything in the uh, LMS. So that you can use, you can go through that LMS and uh, uh, you can just refer the materials available there. Uh, there are videos for um, prompt engineering and how to use chat GPT in the uh, in a proper way. Lot of content is available there. Okay. So this is about uh, the learning management system. Please utilize all these uh, uh, resources so that definitely you will be able outcome based education in our institutions and you can improve the the quality of education not only the quality of education uh, you will be getting good accreditation uh, points grades when we implement ob in a proper way uh, that is uh, our experience uh, you know our institution in marian college kutikanam we have implemented ob in a better way and uh, we could score 3.71 out of 4 for the nac accreditation and uh, uh, the a plus plus grade so I hope uh, all of the participants will benefit from this FTP and I wish all success for the program. I once again thank the Kerala Higher Education Council and the principal and management of Karmar uh, College Mala for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, please note that your day one session is not yet concluded. Uh, once the inaugural session is finished, along with the word of thanks, the day one session by Dr. Sunil Job will come in. So kindly ensure that you don't leave the meeting. And uh, for those who are having trouble in making the payment, uh, kindly scan the QR code given in the brochure. Uh, even after that, if you have trouble in pay making the payment, uh, kindly contact the uh, given number uh, for the support. So thank you. So now for the vote of thanks, I welcome um, Mary Philip, Assistant Professor and HOD, uh, Department of Political Science, IQAC Coordinator, Carmel College, Autonomous. I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. A very good afternoon, distinguished guests, speakers, and participants. Carmel College Autonomous, in its efforts to strive towards excellence and quality, is hosting this seven-day FTP on OBE and essential AI tools for teachers. We would like to place on record the support of Kerala State Higher Education Council and IPSR Solutions in this endeavor. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Rajan Varghese, who presided over today's function and who also inaugurated the function. Thank you so much, sir, for your presence and all the support that you have rendered to this program. I would also like to thank, though in the absence of Dr. Rajan Gurukal, for being a support behind this program for all the initiatives that are being taken on behalf of the Kerala State Higher Education Council in encouraging all the higher education institutions to excel. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, support. Instrumental in encouraging the team at uh, IQAC team at Carmel College Autonomous to take up uh, programs such as these in improving our quality and excellent endeavors. I also thank uh, Dr. Mendes Jacob, CEO of IPSR Solutions and Director, MCA Merigan College, Kutikanam Autonomous. Thank you so much, sir, for all the support you have rendered us. I also thank uh, the resource persons for the day, 
Dr. Sunil Job and Dr. Suresh Nambudri, who will be uh, joining us for the sessions ahead. I thank uh, Mr. Jaymoon, uh, Senior Manager, IPSR. He has been very instrumental in supporting us and helping us with all the uh, infrastructural uh, arrangements for the program. Thank you so much, Jaymoon, sir. We would also like to thank all the participants who have registered and are here with us for this program. Thanking you all once again and hoping that the days to come as part of this seven day FTP add to your treasure of knowledge and understanding. Thanking you all once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so uh, reminder about LMS. So LMS access has been sent via email uh, this morning to all of those who have registered. So for those who have made the payment since last night, uh, LMS access will be provided to you all by tomorrow morning. So for any queries regarding LMS and LMS access, kindly contact the numbers given in the chat. So now uh, let's move forward with the today's session by Dr. Sunil Job on the topic Bloom's Taxonomy. So Dr. Sunil Job is an adjunct faculty of Marian College, Kutikanam Autonomous, who has 30 plus years of experience in teaching and 10 plus years in corporate consultancy. He holds a PhD in mathematical education and has been an assistant professor at NG University College of Teacher Education from 1999. He has started his career as an assistant professor at Carmela Rani Training College, Kollam. He has served as visiting team member of NCTE for grant of recognition and as a resource person for the affiliation renewal committee of MG University. An active blogger in cutting edge technologies in IT, education and data science, Dr. Job has published a few articles in national journals and authored a few academic books and a reference manual in mathematics. So he has served as resource persons for a number of faculty development programs in outcome based education, data science, e-learning, etc. So I welcome you, sir. So, <clears throat> so uh, thank you, Raki, for the wonderful introduction about me. Uh, first of all, before going into the section, I would like to know whether uh, I am audible. Yes, Am I, you are. I'm okay. Okay, thank you. So, uh, anyhow, uh, I'm first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate uh, uh, the Carmel College for identifying such a relevant topic on outcome based education and uh, the relevant uh, AI tools uh, in lines with outcome based education because uh, we know that the educational system uh, globally is in. Uh, the track of disruptions. A lot of disruptions have been happening on the basis of technology because uh, the AI has been uh, redefining the entire phases of education. So uh, we know that uh, outcome-based education is something the most current and relevant and how it uh, is going to evolve when it comes uh, in integration with AI tools is something very, very, very significant. So uh, it is at this point I would like to congratulate uh, uh, the Carmel uh, College for identifying such a relevant topic, which is of great importance to all the uh, educators at uh, higher education stream. Uh, and also, I, I, I am thanking uh, Higher Education Council for giving me an opportunity to interact uh, with you uh, with uh, such a uh, very relevant uh, area in higher education uh, system. So we have got uh, a long way to go for seven days. And I think that all these seven days will be very fruitful to you because we have uh, uh, a lot of sections with which is uh, coming up uh, in lines of uh, outcome-based education. And also, uh, we have got an exclusive three days uh, uh, sections on uh, AI tools. And finally, we will be going to merge AI into uh, OB format, which will be very, very relevant when you come into the phase of uh, implementation of uh, uh, this uh, outcome-based education. And uh, also, it, it, it is uh, quite worth it to mention that uh, don't miss the opportunity for uh, there are a number of activities which has been showcased in the LMS. And uh, there is also a prototype uh, 
uh, engine for uh, outcome, uh, this uh, uh, attainment calculation, which has been showcased in the LMS. So uh, those who have availed uh, this LMS uh, could uh, uh, make the maximum utilization for that. And also uh, the forums, which has been uh, there active in the LMS, uh, you have to uh, make uh, maximum utilization for that because we know that the learning becomes uh, effective uh, when we collaborate. So that there are uh, uh, many, many platforms for collaborations. So those who have already availed this LMS, uh, I request that you should make the maximum utilization of these, uh, uh, all the events which has been showcased, all the resources and activities which has been showcased in that LMS. And also we have got a very wonderful uh, write-ups on outcome-based education, white paper, a lot of write-ups uh, with respect to the assessment tools, strategies, uh, uh, a number of uh, items will be available there. So uh, I think uh, the these seven days as well as an additional uh, 10 days, if you could make the maximum utilization for that, definitely uh, it will be very beneficial for you uh, in the lines of outcome based education. So when uh, in almost all the sections, uh, I think we, we have been uh, uh, going through a number of training programs uh, uh, right from uh, 2018 uh, in the lines of outcome based education. And uh, in all the programs, we used to begin with the Bloom's taxonomy. Because uh, uh, obviously, this Bloom's taxonomy is not at all, uh, it will not, will not at all uh, be a new thing to you because uh, uh, you would have attended many sections on Bloom's taxonomy. And being teachers, if you want to be just for, uh, to our uh, our activity or uh, to be uh, uh, that is just for in the task that we're doing, the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy is something very, very mandatory. So even if you know uh, the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, let it be a revisit because it is uh, uh, something, a principal component which uh, uh, comes to, uh, of help uh, in the proper implementation of outcome-based education. So today we will be having uh, an analysis on uh, Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, so I've got a few slides uh, to share with you. So let me uh, share my screen so that uh, we can go uh, with uh, these sections uh, through uh in the lines of uh, that slides Okay, uh, again, uh, I, I will repeat the same thing. Uh, whether my screen is uh, visible and my sound is audible. If both is okay, just give an uh, S in the chat. I'll be just checking the chat. Okay, a uh, lot of S is coming up. So thank you, thank you. So I think everything is uh, ready. We shall uh, move into our uh, section for today. Thank you, thank you. So let me. So uh, here we go with the uh, uh, Bloom's uh, taxonomy. So this word itself is uh, something. Uh, is something. Uh, it reveals something. That is the uh, Benjamin Bloom uh, is been uh, giving uh, has given us uh, a taxonomical classification. The taxonomy indeed is a classification. So what Benjamin Bloom has given is uh, he has classified the learning process or I would like to say a learning ladder which progresses from simple and concrete learning uh, to uh, complex and abstract. So learning is something which happens in this, uh, in this uh, uh, hierarchy. That is the learning begins with something simple and concrete and it progresses to complex and abstract things. And what Benjamin Bloom has tried to uh, give is that he has tried to classify the uh, road, uh, the road path between the simple and concrete learning uh, to the uh, complex and abstract learning into different levels. So uh, that is what Bloom's taxonomy is all about. The Bloom's taxonomy gives us uh, the levels of learning uh, through which the learner progresses in this learning ladder. 
and this is something very important in the sense is that the Bloom's taxonomy, uh, when it comes to the implementation of outcome-based education, it is essential at all the phases of the implementation. If you take the first two phase, if you want to have, uh, if you want to have a proper formulation of the curriculum in the lines of outcome-based education, obviously uh, we have to go in search of uh, uh, formulating outcomes, uh, formulating syllabus. All these things comes in the first phase. So if you want to show justice uh, in uh, the formulation phase, definitely the Bloom's taxonomy uh, will uh, be uh, something of vital importance. So that will give you a frame of references, how we have to uh, pace our, uh, how we have to place the outcomes, into what level of learning we have to take the students uh, uh, with respect to uh, the particular course like that. And uh, when we go into the interactive phase of uh, teaching learning, that is uh, the interactive phase means where you interact with the students. That is, if you want to interact with the students uh, uh, in an uh, OB scenario, uh, or in an o OB topological uh, uh, format, definitely there also you need uh, out uh, this Bloom's taxonomy because uh, learning is something which has been very abstract. You cannot uh, uh, really identify to what extent that the students have learned. So you realize uh, how uh, to what level the students have learned uh, through the responses that the students uh, show uh, after the uh, af that is on the after your classes. So if you want to identify to what level they have attained, or if you want to uh, pick out the better uh, methodologies and pedagogy in order to bring about the effective learning, there also you should uh, have a thorough uh, knowledge regarding Bloom's taxonomy. So at, at the teaching learning, the interactive phase of teaching learning, there also you need Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, the final uh, phase of uh, teaching learning environment is uh, assessment. So if you want to have the real-time assessment in the lines of outcome-based education, there also you need a, a Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, definitely the Bloom's taxonomy is spanning the teaching learning process at uh, uh, formulation, uh, your teaching learning and uh, the interactive phase as well as in the post-active phase. So this is of that important. That is why in uh, every sections uh, that we uh, uh, go uh, with the faculty development program, uh, we begin with the Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, uh, we have discussed about Bloom's, uh, what is taxonomy. taxonomy. And uh, this taxonomy has been uh, given by uh, Benjamin Bloom uh, in 1956. Later on 2001, this Bloom's taxonomy has been revised by the associates of Benjamin Bloom uh, by Anderson. And what we are following is uh, the, uh, the that which has been revised by Anderson as the revised Bloom's taxonomy. So I think we can, uh, without too much uh, of an intro, we can go into our presentations. So obviously we know that uh, uh, this Bloom's taxonomy is uh, something classifying uh, the process of learning, the process, the levels of learning. So obviously it is the the uh, it is something very important that we have to begin with. What is learning? Obviously there are a lot of statements uh, regarding uh, what is learning. There are uh, the learning could be defined in a sociological perspective, in a psychological perspective, in a number of ways. You have got a lot of uh, statements regarding what is learning. I have just picked out uh, a very, very simple statement uh, regarding what is learning. Actually, learning is a process. When I say learning is a process, the process will be followed by a product, isn't it? The process end with a product. That So when we say that le learning is a process, learning is a process that brings about some changes in the students. So whenever learning happens, the stakeholders, that is the students, will have, will have some changes in the way in which they think, in the way in which they feel, in the way in which they uh, they interact with the society, the way in which they perform something, there will be some change. So obviously, uh, we know that if if you are going to a class, uh, for uh, uh, before every class, that is the students will be having a certain level of behavior, and after uh, you are interaction with the students uh, by uh, different methodological and pedagogical approaches, what happens is that the students' level of behavior will be enhanced to a higher level definitely if it remains the same definitely the time that you have spent with the students is uh, uh, is wasted 
So obviously, all the learning uh, that, that is uh, in a formal environment, uh, the teaching is a deliberate activity which elevates the students from an initial level to a terminal level. Uh, terminal level. So after every class, the students will be enhanced to an upper level. So you can just think, what is the difference between the terminal level and uh, uh, the initial level? That is the product that you have brought about uh, uh, through the process of learning. And this product, this product is what we could consider as outcome. That is, you have brought the students from an initial level to a terminal level. So the product of learning is the difference between the terminal level and the initial level. And that product is nothing but uh, we say that uh, the outcome of that particular class. So in an outcome-based uh, uh, in an outcome-based education scenario, we will be deliberately fixing what should be the outcome first, and we will be streamlining our curriculum in the lines of this outcome so that by the end of the class, that outcome is met. So uh, what I have meant is uh, the, that is you are going to a class and may giving them uh, some uh, lessons uh, for a day. Suppose if you are given uh, a course to teach, definitely the same thing happens. The students will be at an initial level and after completion of uh, the entire course, they will not remain at the initial level. They will be enhanced to a higher level. So what is the difference between the final level that the students will reach after your course has been effectively delivered and the initial level? That difference is nothing but the course outcome. So that you will be fixing first and you will be uh, streamlining the students to attain that particular outcome. Isn't it? So uh, that is nothing but the course outcome. So if you are taking it at a very higher scale, that is if uh, the students are admitted for uh, a program, for example, a BCom or a, a BA Literature or a BSc Mathematics or whatever it may be. The students after plus two, they will be having some certain level of uh, uh, behavior with respect to the academical uh, platform as well as their uh, general graduate attributes. They will be having certain level. And definitely after completion of the program, after three years, they will be enhanced to a higher level. That difference is, is nothing but the program outcome that you initialize first. This is what outcome-based education in its simple terms. So coming to this first slide. Learning is a process that lead to a change. Now we are uh, at uh, Bloom's Taxonomy and tomorrow we'll be going into the outcome-based education uh, uh, into detail. So coming to the Bloom's Taxonomy, every learning will try to bring about some change, obviously. So that change can be something that happened to the way in which you think. That means the change can happen to the intellectual level. Or the change can happen to the way in which you value something, the change can happen to your attitude, isn't it? Or the change can happen to how you do something by means of uh, uh, this uh, more, uh, your motto skills. So, so uh, when I say the learning is something that lead to change, the change can happen to either the way in which you think, uh, the way in which you feel or value things, or the way in which you perform some skills. So the Benjamin Bloom has classified how the changes happens in these three uh, domains. Okay, so that is all the Bloom's taxonomy is speaking to us. So you can just uh, read this, uh, uh, this uh, matter which has been presented in this slide. Learning is a process that brings out some desirable behavioral change. That is what the learning is a deliberate activity. We fix what change should be brought about priorly and the curriculum is a tool by which we elevate the students to that particular direction isn't it so the learning outcomes are the observable and measurable uh, end uh, product of learning and it is observable indicators of objectives obviously there will be a confusion regarding what is an objective and what is an outcome are they both same that is objective is something that we perceive uh, uh, from the teacher's point of view that is the teach what the teacher intend what is my intention as a teacher what do what is my intention i express everything uh, from my point of view we, we we call it as objective 
when the things are conceived from the other end, the other end in the sense, the student's point of view, that is, what is the final specification after the class the students will show? What will uh, what the students are capable of doing something from the student's point of view? We call it as uh, outcome. So actually, it is it is just like uh, the two ends. One is one is vague. That is the teacher's uh, point of view. That is you're going to uh, teach something or uh, or something from the teacher's uh, point of view. From the student's point of view, you are bringing clarity to the process. What the students are capable of doing. So uh, that is just like giving. This is case of the class. So, uh, uh, what the students are capable of doing. So, uh, it is making the objective observable and measurable uh, in terms of observable and measurable statement. That is, objective turned into a clarity and vivid. Uh, so, that is what. So, both of them are uh, the two ends one from teacher's point of view and the others from the student's uh, uh, point of view. And uh, uh, going to the Bloom's taxonomy, the person, the, uh, uh, this uh, person here, which you could see in this slide with a, with a simple smile is nothing but the Benjamin Bloom. And uh, what he has said uh, is uh, uh, that I have quoted him as the statement first. And it is much encouraging also to the teachers. You can read that. What any person in this world can learn, what any person in this world can learn, almost all person can learn and there's a if clause there if provided with appropriate prior and current condition of learning so this is something very very important so as teachers we should identify the prior and current condition of learning if you want to teach something to the students the teaching happens in an hierarchy there is a chain of continuity between uh, what should uh, what the student should learn today and what are the prerequisites they need uh, to accommodate uh, what you are going to teach for today the prior and current conditions so if you are able to link the prior and current conditions in a very comfortable way if you are able to bring a very good sync between the prior and current conditions the learning will happen definitely uh, that is almost everybody can learn so the problem of uh, the, the students uh, is finding difficulty learning is that there is a mis mismatch between the prior and current conditions. So if you are able to bring a very uh, a, a connection between the prior and condition, uh, this uh, prior and current conditions, definitely learning will happen in its better way. And the Bloom's taxonomy will help you to match the prior and current condition because the Bloom's taxonomy is nothing but the levels, the levels of learning. If you want to uh, induce a learning at a certain level, uh, then what should be uh, something which uh, should uh, the student should uh, attain uh, priorly? Uh, that that becomes clear when you uh, master Bloom's taxonomy. So you can just read the slide. Uh, the Bloom's taxonomy is set of three hierarchical models. You know what is that three? Three, because uh, priorly we told that the change can happen in the way in which we think, the way in which we feel, and the way in which we do. So it can be in the three. And how the learning happens in these three? Uh, uh, is uh, uh, been very beautifully uh, classified by Benjamin Bloom. So the Benjamin Bloom has got uh, the uh, the three uh, the models include that the first one is something that happens to the intellectual ability and skill that is co cognitive domain. The second one is feeling emotions and attitude that is effective domain. And the third one is uh, physical and psychomotor skill that is uh, uh, motor skill that is the psychomotor domain. And among this, uh, the cognitive domain is uh, the principal component. And in this presentation, we'll be going into detail with the, uh, the cognitive uh, domain because that is something very essential for formulation. And the other effective and psychomotor domain could be uh, will be implicitly included as uh, a hidden curriculum uh, into this uh, cognitive domain. So uh, we can just uh, uh, pass on. Uh, actually the slide got uh, stuck uh, now it's okay so this is uh, i think th this is uh, something uh, very uh, familiar to you because uh, when i go to all the colleges i could see that uh, there is a, uh, the posters which has been displayed uh, bloom's taxonomy in every corner like this so the bloom's taxonomy revised i told that what is the pre-revised and revised uh, uh, everything i've just given in my introductory remark 
So here you can see the two arrows, one going from symbol to complex, the other going from concrete to abstract. Learning is something which uh, happens in this hierarchy. And the roadmap between simple to complex or from concrete to abstract is being subdivided or classified uh, into different levels, which we call as level of learning. And learning is something which happens in a continuum from the most simple and concrete level to the complex and abstract level. And the different levels has been very beautifully showcased as uh, the different uh, levels in uh, Bloom's taxonomy. The most uh, uh, basic level of learning in the cognitive domain is nothing but remembering. Obviously, you will be knowing this, remembering. And uh, uh, after, uh, so we will be just going uh, through one by one. So uh, the learning begins, the, uh, the cognitive, uh, the learning begins from the cognitive le level uh, from uh, the remembering. Remembering means, I, when, when do we say I remember? Remembering is a memory level of learning. That is, whatever, because we are connected with this external world through the five senses. So whatever stimulus that we receive from the external world will come and get uh, recorded into the mind, where uh, we will come and we will try to memorize it, isn't it? So remembering is nothing but a memory level of learning. So uh, at that stage of what we expect from the students, Memory is something that the students try to uh, cram something even without knowing the meaning. So at the memory level, what the we can expect from the students? The students will try to recall, recall what has been recorded in their memory, isn't it? Even without knowing, even without knowing what it really means. So uh, uh, the memory level uh, just uh, give only the uh, recall. Uh, from what they have received from the external uh, environment through their senses. Once it comes to the uh, memory, uh, there will be an intellectual processes which happens in the students by which the students will try to uh, the, the students will try to perceive or they will try to understand the meaning of whatever they have seen, felt uh, or heard or whatever it may be. So the next level of learning is called the understanding level, where the students, uh, through their intellectual uh, apprehension, uh, will try to understand the meaning of whatever they have memorized. So the next higher level of learning is, uh, we could call it as an understanding level. So when we come to our subject matter, because uh, we, uh, in our uh, uh, normal uh, classroom activities, we used to present uh, a lot of concepts to the students. That is, we will be presenting the different laws, theories, and concepts to the students, which have some abstraction. They will not be directly, uh, they will not be directly uh, understood because there will be a bit of abstractions which will be there in many of the principles, theories, etc. So the students uh, should have to uh, put their thought processes in order to make the thing meaningful. So the concept learning happens. So in every uh, area of study, the students uh, uh, learn uh, or understands their concepts at this level. So uh, what we uh, know is that the second level is that they try to understand the meaning of whatever that has uh, reached them and they have recorded in their mind as memory. So after that, what happens? Now they have understood the uh, after they have understood all the uh, concepts related to the different subjects that you handling. So this becomes meaningful, or this becomes uh, uh, yeah, that is uh, all these things that we have learned and understood uh, should be applied in a real uh, time environment. Then only uh, uh, this learning will become an, a utilitarian value. So for that, we have to transfer the learning of the, the learned concepts into some unfamiliar uh, situations to solve these problems. So transferring our uh, learned knowledge or the knowledge that we have understood to some practical uh, or problematic situations so that you will be able to solve that particular the particular uh, situations by the knowledge that you have acquired so far. So that is the next level of learning where we are trying to apply what you have learned into an unfamiliar situation to solve. 
So that is the next level of learning, application level. So application is nothing but a transfer of learning into some unfamiliar situations. And what is the next level? Analysis. Analysis is nothing but a higher order applications. That is, you are handling some uh, complex situations. So when you are handling the complex situations, you don't take the thing as a whole. That is, we will be uh, uh, comfortably uh, partitioning or breaking down the complex situation into different uh, similar uh, fragments. And we apply the knowledge uh, into these different components as such and try to find out the relationship between them. And that process is analysis. So for analyzing, you are handling a very complex environment where you are uh, intelligently partitioning that uh, complex situation into uh, similar uh, or uh, similar uh, uh, fragments and you're applying that knowledge uh, that you've already learned into these uh, fragments and try to find out the connections and associations etc uh, that is nothing but analysis obviously when we are doing phd what we are doing is that we take one objective and uh, uh, we make a number of uh, uh, this is a uh, sub objectives uh, or different parameters and we will take uh, all the use cases related to that objectives and then we will try to analyze it and then we'll be coming with the, the solutions so analysis is uh, breaking an environment into uh, different fragments relevant fragments and applying that knowledge and finding out the uh, connections and the next uh, level is definitely the evaluation so when you go with an evaluation phase definitely you are in the you are in the level of a judge that is that is uh, you uh, are in the level of the judge means that the real evaluation happens only when you analyze the scenario in all its length and breadth and height that is you have to go with the process and consensus of the particular situations then only you can come with an unbiased and authentic evaluations so if you want to evaluate something you have to uh, go into the particular scenario break it into different components analyze it and only after analysis you can uh, give a thorough or an authentic uh, evaluation so normally these analysis and evaluations are uh, coming very close together only after thorough analysis you can uh, have a uh, thorough uh, evaluation obviously if you are asked to uh, this is an example which i used to say suppose if you are asked to uh, make an evaluation regarding any stage program or dance program what we do is that before evaluating we will be analyzing that dance performance uh, with respect to different criteria whether these criteria are going uh, exactly uh, so uh, different criteria means you are analyzing the dance on the basis of different criteria each criteria is a fragment each criteria is a, a fragment what i've told that a complex situation has been broken into different uh, components so each criteria will depict a uh, a fragment and you'll be analyzing it uh, the, whether every steps are going like that and then you are trying to identify connecting it together and then you will pass out the final evaluation so evaluation comes uh, uh, that is uh, uh, over uh, analysis and what comes the highest that is creating Creating in the sense is that we are trying to bring something new, not uh, something uh, which has been already there, uh, uh, brought into uh, a new format. No, the evaluation, the creation means uh, you are unlocking the creative potentials and trying to bring about something new into uh, this uh, uh, bank of knowledge. So, so I, I would like to say that if you want to have a very, uh, uh, very uh, a productive, uh, the, the creative piece of work, definitely it comes after a thorough evaluation. Because when we evaluate something, we will be able to understand what is the shortcoming. That is why when we go with the a PhD work, uh, we are giving uh, our second chapter uh, is a review of literature. Why we are giving that much importance to review of literature? So, review of literature is being intended to identify the area that you are doing research is what is the current status, isn't it? What is the current status is in the area that we are studying? So, what is the, uh, 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 that is, what is the shortcomings at the present uh, in a particular study? And only from there, you can go into the higher uh, level of uh, creativity. So, when we make a thorough analysis, 
when we make a thorough analysis, definitely you will feel some necessity that there is a need for change. So that necessity will trigger out uh, your uh, research activity and it will be the guiding light. Uh, normally, when we uh, go with the, uh, this uh, uh, correcting the thesis, uh, what I used to see that the less importance has been seen in the review of literature. It is very important because necessity is the mother of invention and you will feel necessity only by thorough evaluation or analysis of the situation. So uh, after analysis, you will be evaluating and after evaluating, you will feel that there is some necessity uh, uh, or these are the some of the shortcomings which need to be uh, modified or which need to be uh, uh, th that is uh, enhanced. So that will lead to your creative potentials. So this is how the learning should progress from the simple to the complex level. Uh, so uh, if you have a thorough idea on uh, how this learning progresses, how the learner react, uh, then definitely it will be helpful for you uh, to uh, bring the things in the right way, uh, in identifying the right strategies, in identifying the right uh, uh, outcomes, on identifying the right measure, assessment tools. All these things uh, could be rightly done if you have a thorough uh, picture about this. Now, in the in, in our consequent slides, we'll be going into uh, a little detail regarding each of these uh, levels. So I've just uh, given one more slide. Learning is a process engineered in such a way that one level is a prerequisite for the other and learning takes place in a continuum. That is, uh, obviously, uh, if you want to have an understanding, there should be something that uh, you have sensed uh, through the five senses. And if you want to apply something, Definitely, you should have some a thorough knowledge and understanding about uh, uh, the uh, prerequisites uh, or uh, some background things which is essential for the application. That should be mastered. If you want to analyze, you have to apply the knowledge in different uh, components. So one is a prerequisite for the other and learning happens in a continuum. And this is, uh, this is we are just uh, uh, going into a little more detail uh, into uh, each of this level and bringing it uh, into the format of a question. So here I have divided, I have divided this screen into uh, three components. The first one, demonstrated skill. That is what the learner will, because learning is something abstract. Learning is a covert behavior. It is something happening inside the students. And you'll be identifying the students learning through the responses that the students show, isn't it? So what are the demonstrated skills or responses that the students show at this level is being showcased in the first uh, in this first uh, uh, area. And these are the verbs uh, which will help you to formulate questions as well as formulate uh, course outcomes or uh, formulate uh, program outcomes, uh, uh, these verbs will be help you, will be helping you. And these verbs are available at the LMS. There is no need uh, to worry. So I have just uh, showcased a few of the verbs uh, which could be uh, very uh, comfortably uh, plugged in with the, the remembering level questions. And I have just given a few questions here. So this will bring a little more clarity uh, into the different levels. And as, uh, especially uh, when you go through these questions, uh, it will be clear. So obviously, at remembering level, these are the skills that you could, uh, uh, that is, ability to recall information. Remembering is memory level. The students are remembering. Ability to recall. Uh, that is, uh, uh, ability, uh, the knowledge of the event, dates, uh, place. So uh, just uh, remembering these things, all these things, uh, uh, th these are the demonstrated skills you can expect at uh, uh, a remembering level. And these are the verbs that helps you to formulate questions at these uh, uh, levels. That do not mean that these verbs are only uh, delimited to this level. You can use it at the different levels, but these the verbs may help you to formulate questions because the same question, verb could be used at uh, uh, the lower level as well as at the higher level. Uh, the, uh, the freedom is uh, to, to the teachers that you use verbs because uh, the teachers, uh, they, when they are identified, when they're using that verbs, they will, should identify what cognitive challenge that the students, uh, uh, this question brings to the students. So definitely uh, the selection of the verb should be, uh, 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 the full freedom should be given to the teachers. So now we are talking about Bloom's taxonomy. Suppose if I'm asking a question, list the various domains in Bloom's taxonomy. List. The list is a verb you can identify here, list. I just asked you a list. So here you will be telling that, okay, uh, there are three domains. Okay, cognitive domain, 
affective domain, psychomotor domain. This question only demand a memory level uh, knowledge. A mem that is, this will demand only the memorization of this technical term. What? Uh, this uh, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Because I have explained uh, about uh, uh, this uh, cognitive domain. What is happening in this cognitive domain? I didn't explain uh, what is happening in the affective domain. I didn't say that the affective domain has got five uh, levels. That is, it moves from receiving, responding, valuing, organizing, characterizing. I didn't say. But even without uh, that, you are able to answer uh, that uh, uh, affective domain. Uh, or uh, you can answer uh, this uh, psychomotor domain. So the, this is only testing your memory. So, so maybe you will, you will be a PhD uh, in uh, Bloom's taxonomy. But this question only demand a memory, uh, your ability to memorize these three uh, domain name, isn't it? Any GK question, uh, even without uh, who is the author of uh, uh, who is the author of Macbeth? You, you will say uh, William Shakespeare, even without uh, uh, reading or knowing the, uh, what has been there uh, in uh, in that uh, novel, uh, this uh, Macbeth, uh, you will be able to answer uh, that question. So any GK question uh, is uh, to a greater extent is a remembering level question. Even without knowing uh, the facts and facets related to that, you will be able to answer. So that is just you are testing the students with at a memory level. Suppose if I say define multiculturalism, definition. Definition is that you have forced to write the same statement which has been given by some sociologist. And I've seen the teachers who are deducting mark uh, uh, if they have made some punctuation error or some sm sm small spelling mistakes, they are uh, deducting that marks for that. Because uh, this is not exactly right, uh, the same statement which has been given by such and such uh, sociologist or educator like that. So def definition is also, uh, if I ask a question, define uh, the student's uh, freedom is restricted. They have to memorize uh, the exact statement which has been given by some other and they have to reproduce it like that. Name the union territory, uh, territories of India. The students will be, okay, uh, they'll be naming it that, okay, Puducherry, uh, Lakshadweep, uh, and the Nicobar, like that, they'll be um, naming it. So even without knowing what is the difference between the union territory or the state, they'll be able to answer this question. This question only demand that. So that is, these questions are, could be considered as the basic level question, remember level question. Now we are going to the next level, understanding level. Now you know that in an understanding level, there should be a conceptual knowledge should be there. You should have an understanding about the meaning of the things. So this is what uh, this level question demand. So here, what the students sh uh, should be demonstrating, understands the information, grasp the meaning, translate knowledge uh, in their own content like that. These are the uh, things that you should expect the students at this level of learning. Obviously, these are the verbs that may help you uh, to frame questions uh, at this level. So now uh, the same thing uh, we are discussing on Bloom's taxonomy. So I'm going to take the Bloom's taxonomy up to all the six levels. Okay, explain the various levels of learning in what cognitive domain. So you know now uh, the cognitive domain, according to Bloom's taxonomy, uh, this I have got six levels, remembering, understanding, you know uh, what is happening in this level. We have explained it. Now you are in a position to answer this. So, so for a question at an understanding level, what do that question demand? Definitely the it, uh, test the student's ability to understand the concept which has been uh, depicted in that question. That is, a conceptual level knowledge is being there. So you will be explaining that, explain the various levels of learning in cognitive domain. So you should know what is cognitive domain, or what uh, does each level signifies, all these things should be known if you want to answer this question. Before is told, Define multiculturalism. So you have just written some uh, the statement uh, which is given by some other educator or sociologist as such. Now I am asking the question, restate multiculturalism in your own words. Your own words. You can write multiculturalism in your own words only when you really understand what is multiculturalism. Isn't it? The, the example which I often say is that multiculturalism is just like a fruit salad, not like a melting bowl. 
if the students are able to write it like that, they understood what is multiculturalism. Isn't it? What is fruit salad? Every fruits are having, it's not losing its identity, remaining as such bound in the cream of uh, uh, social cohesion. Isn't it? So if the students are able to identify like that or present the things like that, that is worthy than uh, the previous definition which has been given by some other uh, persons. So discuss the privilege of union territories of India. Before they have only listed, they have only named. Now they have understood the privilege. Okay, it's uh, uh, it, it has been. Uh, uh, they have got a lot of access to the central government. Uh, uh, the, the different projects, uh, uh, central government uh, could be directly uh, available. Likewise, they are able to understand what is the privilege that uh, uh, every uh, city, uh, every citizen uh, of a union territory they enjoy. So uh, that becomes a uh, more uh, higher level of learning, understanding. And what, what, what is next? OK, applying. So when I say applying, we, uh, that is the knowledge that we have accumulated uh, or uh, we have understood should be transferred into a unfamiliar or new situations, which helps you to solve that particular problem. That is the real application. So you can just read here, use method concept, law, theories in new situations. So uh, application is just like a transferring of knowledge, transferring of what you know to some pr problematic or real-time situations by which you solve it. So uh, solve problems using the required skill or knowledge. You are trying to, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, fix some solutions uh, to some problems by the knowledge that you have already acquired uh, th through the different sources for solving the problems. So that is application. So obviously, these are the words that may help you to uh, prepare questions in applications, like calculate, predict, apply, solve, etc., etc., etc. This is available there in uh, the URLMS. <clears throat> so we are moving along with the Bloom's taxonomy, right? The first question that I've asked you was to list. Then I asked to explain. Now I am asking you to frame few questions related to each domain in your subject. So what does this question uh, signifies? Here I am asking you to use what? Bloom's taxonomy to frame questions in the subject that you are handling. So what is happening there? You are transferring the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy to the subject to frame a question at different level. Suppose if I am asking, use Bloom's taxonomy to formulate a application level question in your subject means that you are transferring that knowledge. So you are applying that knowledge for framing question. So that is what we could say that application level. Okay. So uh, like illustrate a few multiculturalism practices in education. So uh, here you are illustrating, you are ex explaining. So you should know what is multiculturalism. Then only uh, you can uh, you can explain uh, these are the different practices uh, that uh, in not multiculturalism in an educational system in your school or an educational system. If you want to explain it, you have to transfer that knowledge. Then only you will be able to identify and explain that knowledge. So this is how application application happens. Now we will go with the. Uh, I'm just checking out the time. We'll go with the uh, analyzing. So we know that in uh, an analytical scenario, uh, we are just confronting with uh, some problematic situations, where uh, a, a not problematic in a complex situations where we try to fragment it. Fragment it. We we try to fragment it. That is what uh, in, anal in analysis, what we do it. We uh, fragment it and then we apply the knowledge. So uh, suppose if I uh, ask you to, I'm just giving you uh, two mobile phones. And I am asking you to analyze these mobile phones, uh, uh, to analyze the performance of these mobile phones. So what will you do? So obviously, what we do is that we can uh, fragment not the mobile phone, uh, we can uh, fragment uh, uh, the performance with respect to the different criteria. Okay, I will take the first criteria. I'm the first uh, breakdown, but I'm going to take is that what is the battery life of these two phones? Okay, that is it. So I am just uh, fragmenting uh, the performances on the uh, basis of the battery life. Then uh, uh, what is the performance of the uh, camera for both these? So I have fragmented it into and the segment. Likewise, I am just fragmenting it into a uh, different segment and then I am comparing it. So 
in uh, this uh, uh, analysis, what we do is that breaking a complex situation into the component parts. What is the complex situation's performance? How did I break it? Battery life, uh, the camera pixels, uh, then the cost factor like that. I can break it into the different uh, components and then I can make a comparison. So uh, that is it. Uh, so uh, identify the relationship and interactions between. So suppose uh, if I uh, say, uh, suppose if it is, uh, uh, you, you are creating a, a computer program. So suppose you created a computer program and uh, th there is an error in that computer program. And if I ask you to bug fix it, what, what will you do? You will have to analyze this uh, uh, program uh, by uh, the different components. Uh, it is uh, what you do is that okay uh, this is uh, the first component and whether uh, the things are happening uh, correctly in that first component okay the second part of the program uh, likewise you will be fragmenting the big program into different 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 uh, uh, components and you will be checking how it has been working uh, uh, how the working has been happening uh, with respect to each components and we'll be trying to identify uh, their connections and then we'll be identifying the solutions so that is uh, the, uh, this bug fixing, or uh, it could be considered as an analytical uh, level task. Because so the common task which has been common is that uh, salt analysis. What we do is that identify the salt. What we do is that uh, we will be uh, taking the salt and we'll be taking a small portion of the salt, uh, do some uh, types of uh, uh, brown ring test, like the different test you will be doing. And after all doing all these tests, we will be combining all the result together to identify the salt. So identification is an analytical level question. So this is uh, what we do in analysis. So in analysis, uh, classify, uh, outline, break, categorize, analyze, compare. These are the verbs that may help you to uh, formulate questions at uh, analysis. So you can just uh, see uh, this question. Categorize the given question into various levels of cognitive domain. This is again Bloom's taxonomy. In the previous application level, I asked you what? I asked you to prepare an application level question in your subject. So what did you do? you have applied, transferred the knowledge of Bloom's taxonomy to your subject and to you are prepared one question uh, with respect to uh, the level which I have asked you. So that is uh, application. Now what I'm asking is that I am giving you questions. I am giving you questions and I ask you to categorize these questions with respect to the different levels. So what do you do? We'll take one question and we'll check it with respect to whether it is going well with the remembering level or whether it is more suitable for our understanding level or whether it is an application level questions. You will be identifying, uh, checking out these questions with respect to uh, the characteristics the questions uh, display with respect to uh, each levels and you will be identifying the level. So that is little more higher. So you should know all these levels. You should know the nature of the questions, uh, the what cognitive challenge these questions bring to the students. Uh, uh, so what uh, uh, you expect uh, these questions, uh, what response you expect from these students, whether it uh, whether it uh, shows an application level, uh, cognitive level challenge or an, uh, so this could be identified. So that is an analytical question. Oh, uh, compare multiculturalism with monoculturalism. So uh, two isms are given. Multiculturalism, monoculturalism. If you want to compare, how will you compare? It is an analytical level question. What is the form of government in multiculturalism and monoculturalism? What is the, what is the, uh, the status of uh, every citizen in monoculturalism, uh, multiculturalism? So you are fragmenting this ism, this philosophy into uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, this, this, this social system uh, into different uh, subcomponents and you are comparing it. So if you want to compare it, it is an analytical level question. You're comparing it with respect to different, different, uh, what you could say, different components, different components, and you will be explaining it thoroughly. So uh, if you just uh, uh, ask a question, define, that is just a basic level question. Compare two systems. That is a higher order question. So you should know both the systems. You should know how uh, compatibly it could be categorized and you can compare. That is a higher order learning. So uh, that is uh, application level. Uh, so likewise, I, I'm not. Uh, uh, so now evaluation level, we know that 
evaluation level we know that you are in the position the students are in the i when i say you the students are in the position of a judge so analytical and evaluation are coming very close together only after analysis you pass your judgment so evaluation is your judgment after analysis that is evaluation so compare and discriminate between ideas comparison 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 means analysis and then bringing the discrimination that is your evaluation so assess values of theory how value that is whether it is trustworthy suppose if i am asking a question to uh, that is uh, uh, merits and demerits compare the merits and demerits that is an evaluation level question if you want to compare it you should know the system in its full length and breadth and then only you will be able to have a thorough comparison or if you want to identify the merits and demerits that is there so these are the verbs that may help you to uh, that may help you to uh, evaluate uh, so here uh, th there is a, a, a rank access desire choose if you want to choose something, uh, suppose if you want to choose which mobile uh, is uh, uh, do you recommend? So definitely you make an analysis, as I've told, uh, battery life, cost, um, uh, the, uh, this uh, camera pixels, uh, uh, likewise, the different functionalities that different uh, mobiles provide, you make a comparison and then only you will make a choice. So analysis followed by evaluation. Rank. We will be familiar with this uh, NIRF ranking. Uh, recently, about uh, last month, uh, uh, the NIRF has published a 2023 ranking. So, what did, uh, how did that ranking happen? Throughout India, uh, with respect to the different categories, the college will be submitting the SSR. And with respect to different criteria, uh, the, the these uh, uh, teaching and learning resources, uh, uh, this um, uh, what we could say, uh, re researches uh, the, the teaching and learning uh, researches uh, out uh, this graduate uh, 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 yeah, the graduate outcomes uh, uh, perceptions like that they have got different criteria. So with respect to different criteria means they are analyzing the performance of the different colleges with respect to the different criteria and they give some uh, technical score, uh, some score to these criteria, club up these scores and on the basis of the score they rank the top 100 or 200 uh, or top 50 colleges uh, or institutions throughout India. Ranking. Ranking means evaluating the performance. So before ranking they have made a thorough analysis. And they have given some uh, quanti uh, quantifiable measures uh, with respect to the performance of the analysis and then they are ranking. So ranking comes higher. So only after thorough analysis, you are ranking them. So now going to uh, the, uh, some questions. Do you think you could prepare questions at all level of Bloom's taxonomy in your subject? Okay, not yes or no, justify. So if you want to justify, if you want to justify, you should have a thorough analysis. Okay, so this is, uh, Bloom's taxonomy is not uh, uh, appropriate for uh, my subject. In some areas, I am finding it difficult to uh, create such and such questions. So uh, I don't think that Bloom's taxonomy. So this is what evaluation. Uh, this is something um, important in research also. Uh, such things uh, you will feel only after review of literature. This is the importance of review of literature and review of literature. We are analyzing it and then uh, coming into some uh, uh, justifications that uh, these are the areas that has to be uh, worked out uh, and th that has to be modified. And it is from there your creative uh, potentials will unlock. So, uh, so you, uh, when I uh, when I ask this question, not to prepare a question, not to identify which level. Suppose I asking you question, evaluate uh, how Bloom's taxonomy is compact. Is it compatible for your topic or uh, subject? If you want to have a thorough judgment, definitely uh, this will help you. And now this one critically evaluate uh, the practices of multiculturalism okay we say that multiculturalism is like like heaven obviously uh, we say that everybody uh, is been given their own respects their identity uh, a, 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 the, the this culture of uh, uh, tolerance is there in multiculturalism all these things so it is uh, essential for coexistence uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, something but uh, when you go deeper into multiculturalism, uh, definitely uh, you could uh, uh, able to identify the pros and cons, uh, the merits and demerits and flows, etc. So if you are asking such a question, definitely the students will be able to answer that question. The students will be able to answer that question only when they have understood the particular concept or phenomena, whatever uh, thing that you are asking in its full length, in its full length. 
So that is uh, something uh, uh, this evaluation uh, uh, signifies. So critically evaluate, that is a higher order question. But uh, there is a challenge. Suppose if you are giving a, a full-fledged notes to the students, that is, you are giving that evaluation level question in advance, and you are giving a full-fledged notes to the students uh, to answer this question. Is it an evaluation question? Is the students evaluating the things? No, they are just uh, uh, giving, uh, going through the points that you have given, you have evaluated, isn't it? So the question is an evaluation question, but that do not bring a cognitive challenge of evaluation uh, question demand to the students. So uh, higher order questions, uh, uh, you should not communicate to the students priorly. It should be uh, their uh, creative potentials. Uh, then only uh, these questions, uh, 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 that is uh, such a type of learning will be brought about in the students. You can give them concepts and um, practices. When you go to the higher order, uh, uh, these questions should come as a surprise question so that uh, that will uh, reveal their, uh, poten their creative potential. Then only the, they can be able to excel in its best. So that is all. So evaluate the state of affairs, the, the uh, uh, welfare of urine territories. Okay. Uh, and finally, create level questions. So here, yeah, yeah, can you see this diagram? So in analysis, what we do, you are breaking down a situation into different components, apply your knowledge and try to find out. Suppose if you're making a study about the human body, you can uh, compartmentalize it into your skeleton system, nervous system, muscular system. And if, uh, if, the, if a person has been having some ailment, you can, uh, you can study uh, in a, a specialized level in these three levels and apply their knowledge and then co combine together to have a better diagnosis and treatment. So that is analysis. And uh, creative is something synthesis. Synthesis is that uh, you should uh, have the foundations and knowledge uh, for creations. And that knowledge put together to give uh, solutions uh, to uh, some of the uh, unanswered questions will be uh, a create level questions. So you should use old ideas to create something new. So some problems, some unanswered questions or problems, you are trying to make it or solve it. Uh, you are bring, trying to bring up some new uh, discoveries or inventions by clubbing that knowledge that you already ha uh, have with you uh, to create uh, some uh, workable solutions for uh, these uh, situations. So that is really uh, create. But in uh, arts uh, areas, there are a lot of possibility for create, creating a poem. Uh, no, not not transfiguring the poem, creating uh, your own uh, your spontaneous uh, overflow of emotions should come from you, uh, which should uh, come as a poem. Uh, so that is great. Or uh, an artistic piece of work. Uh, there is a lot of possibility there. Uh, and uh, uh, it is a fact that uh, in a uh, two hour or three hour examinations, you it is not wise to give a create level question. Because uh, you can give a question up to application level or uh, not application, analytical level or even uh, a greater extent evaluation level. You cannot give a create level question to uh, for a paper pencil exam or to, uh, for a two hour or three hour examination. It is not it, it is not possible. That is why uh, uh, in a higher education system, we are integrating projects. When we come with this uh, and new education policy, we have got multiple entry and exist. The fourth year has been totally dedicated for create level activities, for researches, etc. Uh, obviously, we are moving uh, with a great pace for implementation of uh, uh, the recommendations in the new education policy. Where uh, So the create level is something that demand uh, some research level uh, learning. Uh, uh, in uh, the degree level uh, as well as in the higher education uh, post graduation level etc so creating so if you want to have some uh, create level learning in the students we should uh, integrate uh, different uh, projects uh, to the students so that uh, uh, they uh, will be able to work with it and come up with the uh, better solutions uh, uh, and up with the better uh, learning in that particular uh, levels so that is uh, uh, creating so now uh, we are coming to the Bloom's taxonomy. In the previous slide, I've asked you whether the Bloom's taxonomy is compatible to your subject. And uh, I presume that uh, you, you have answered uh, no. Then what will be my next question? Obviously, you know your problem. So now you are in a position to go ahead and to create a new model, which 
is answering all your uh, which will be answering all your uh, queries isn't it your uh, problem so that is the next level create level so create a new model of classification of, uh, of learning objectives that answers all your problems so that is something new so that has started from where from your analysis from your analysis you found uh, the shortcomings so the review of literature you found the shortcomings and from there uh, you have to progress ahead so that will be the leading light for research and etc so develop a presentation develop a, uh, a presentation to inspire multiculturalism okay obviously uh, in this uh, you can uh, you know the concepts of multiculturalism and you are just going to create something uh, a presentation uh, in a new model so that you are able to create so the so this is how uh, the things could be worked out with uh, so so this is how uh, we have just analyzed uh, uh, the Bloom's taxonomy, its cognitive domain, the different levels of learning, what are the cognitive challenges and processes which has been happening at each levels and how we can integrate it with the your subject that you're handling and uh, what the students will be uh, responding, how the students will be responding at the different levels of learning, I think it's clear and how to create questions at these levels uh, that is uh, the major focus of my uh, section today how to create questions at these levels so that you have to ensure whether the students have attained that particular uh, level of learning and obviously uh, we could say that the first three levels uh, uh, that is a uh, uh, memory level that is uh, and, uh, the, the first three levels uh, according to the bloom's taxonomy uh, that knowledge uh, the understanding and application could be considered as the lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills could be considered as applica uh, as uh, uh, analysis um, uh, evaluation and creation could be considered as uh, the higher order thinking skills and uh, uh, it is uh, a, a fact that most of our question papers are delimited to uh, the lower order thinking skills especially to the first two levels so uh the best way to increase the quality of any uh, higher education institutions is to enhance uh, the level of the questions so if you are taking the, the if you are just giving the higher order questions for evaluation definitely uh, what the students uh, think is that they have to come to that level so according to the bloom's taxonomy we say that anybody can learn so definitely everybody could learn if you are giving them a situations. So when we are enhancing the level of these questions, then definitely the students will be able to bound, uh, are bound to reach that particular level. So they pass out as uh, uh, confident uh, uh, graduates, not confused graduates. So if you are just uh, asking what 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 is this what is that questions in uh, uh, level one and level two the students will be answering um, uh, giving uh, some by heart uh, solutions and after coming out they will not be able to meet the challenges of, of life and the the, the uh, career platforms so if you want to have them a productive a very productive a, a competent uh, and uh, scholars which is, could contribute uh, to the society definitely they have to be brought to the higher order thinking skills so that is what uh, uh, most of the uh, these uh, examination reforms they says that we have to uh, enhance the uh, examination system by enhancing the quality of the questions to a higher order so now we know that uh, uh, the new education policy is uh, taking every uh, institutions uh, to an auto uh, this uh, uh, autonomous institutions either uh, as an independent institution those who are having the uh, 3000 plus uh, students or as a cluster so whatever be the case autonomy will give the freedom for uh, working so you will be able to have uh, some uh, uh, this uh, um, <clears throat> criteria uh, some policies regarding the question paper, whether to have 50% uh, from higher order and 50% from lower order like that. So that do not mean that you should totally eliminate uh, uh, lower order. No, you should have lower order questions. Some uh, 30, uh, some 40 to 50%, let it be lower order and 50% uh, questions from higher order. You can have policy or even uh, you can set policies like uh, from each uh, uh, levels, uh, what is the proportion of questions that could be uh, included for the exams. So uh, you could think about uh, that so this is uh, not a, a blank slide uh, uh, i want to get some questions uh, some i'm going to ask some questions to you so which level does this a question uh, according to bloom's taxonomy you can say it as whether it is k1 for uh, uh, the knowledge level k2 understanding k3 application k4 analyzing k5 evaluation and k6 creating 
I, let me keep my uh, this one open. You can uh, give it in chat. Which level? Which level? Many K4 is coming. Many K4 is coming. This is a tricky question. I have just told you when I was uh, asking about uh, uh, analysis. Uh, uh, suppose if you are giving an evaluation question, suppose if you are giving that evaluation question in advance and giving the answer. So will it be an evaluation? Will it be a uh, higher order question for the students? No. So here you can read the students learn from notes. That means you have already given them notes. So they are not uh, bringing out some uh, cognitive challenge or self. Uh, uh, that is, they are not uh, uh, thinking regarding that particular scenario, isn't it? They are not put some uh, independent effort to answer this question. That is, the student learned from notes the answer to the question. Analyze the motives of speech. The the question is what analytical level question K four. But we killed that question and we have brought it to K one or K two level. Because they have studied it from notes only. So you have given the analysis happens. Uh, that is uh, the teacher have analyzed the things and given to the student. Student didn't analyze. So you have killed uh, that possibility of an analytical question and we have made it to K2. Why I say K2 is that, uh, okay, analyze the motives of the speech of Mark Andrew is a very famous uh, speech. Uh, Shakespearean play, Julius Caesar. Uh, and the students give a very perfect answer to the question in his own words. So he didn't uh, write what the teachers have given uh, as such. He has written in its own words. So you understood the things. So it is uh, only a K2 level. K2 level. Okay. Next, uh, find the volume. Uh, find the volume of a cube when one of the side is known. <laughs> Volume of the cube when one of the side is known. Okay. Obviously, uh, uh, there is a, a tendency to say that it is an application level. Okay. It is a debatable thing. Actually, what is the volume of the cube? Side into side into side. Suppose if I say that the side is 10, instead of writing that side, I will write 10 into 10 into 10. 10 into 10 into 10. So instead of writing side, if I uh, side is a is a general uh, thing that I say for uh, the measurement, isn't it? The side into side into side. The, the instead of side, if I say that the side is ten, you put uh, ten to ten to ten. So what is analysis? Analysis is transferring the knowledge into an unfamiliar situation. This is a direct substitution in the formula. So that is only a K one or K two level. K1 or no, K2 level. Just you remember the formula, subst directly substituting it and then finding out the answer. It could be considered as a K1 or K2 level. If it is, if you want to make it as an application level question, I will say that, okay, uh, a, a tank will be in the form of a cube. The water is flowing into the tank with such and such rate. At what time this uh, tank will try to uh, fill the tank? Obviously, you will be applying that knowledge there the volume of the uh, tank uh, and this is the the volume of water that comes in uh, one uh, second uh, so how many time it will take that will be an application level so directly the substitution in the formula uh, could be considered as either k1 or k2 uh, uh, i have put it here it is k2 it is a debatable thing okay <laughs> Okay, uh, the K4 also came. Uh, the student is asked to conduct an experiment. Salt analysis, let it be. Conducted and examine the result. Uh, uh, experiment and examine the result of the experiment and record the conclusion. So conducting experiment. So you'll be conducting uh, the experiment, uh, the different components of the experiment. You'll be recording it, uh, uh, find out uh, the connections between these, and you'll be coming. So it is obviously, it is K4. Debate the pros and cons of net banking. Debating. <laughs> Debate. OK. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. I, I, I'm happy. Uh, 
okay debate debate means uh, you should know you will be you will be analyzing it and then you will be uh, giving your uh, remarks uh, whether it is what are the merits what are the demerits so it is an evaluation level okay fine match the invention with the inventors match the following or other books other match the books with other match the following okay even without knowing that invention a gk question even without knowing they will be know, uh, knowing uh, by hearting uh, the inventions or even without reading the book so match the following it could be this inventions and inventors <laughs> this i am not going uh, asking you why because you have already answered the bloom's taxonomy uh, create a model of classification of learning objective the, that is uh, create k, k6 because you already told that uh, this is not uh, 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 that is the bloom's taxonomy is not uh, uh, compatible for my uh, topic so i asked you obviously uh, that's an issue so we had to go ahead so go and call this k6 so uh, i think you have done the things very very good and we have got a uh, task which has been showcased in uh your lms and uh, i will just uh, the the task that you have to do here so this uh, this is an automated excel sheet right this is an automated excel sheet uh, where uh, you are going to make a question paper analysis that means you are going to analyze a question paper that means you are in the what level k4 level of bloom's taxonomy this is a uh, this is an assignment at a k4 level of bloom's taxonomy not K4. And there you are asked to write your remark. So it is K5 level. So this uh, for template will be available in the LMS. So that is why I told that those who have uh, per, uh, got the LMS access, uh, don't keep it uh, aside because it is a very worthy. I I'll say it is very worthy. A lot of uh, things are there which you, you will really enjoy it. So what you have to do is that you have to uh, because ju just we want to get a, an idea regarding our previous year's question paper so you can take any question paper any question paper the, uh, from any of the any of the courses that you're handling any uh, university examination question paper uh, you can take one obviously uh, here uh, we have got about 35 you can enter 35 questions up to 35 questions are uh, here. So you can uh, uh, enter 35 questions in the sense, suppose if your question paper, uh, A part may be having five questions, B part may be having five questions, C part totally 15 questions will be there. Uh, suppose if there is uh, options, no issues. Uh, don't think about uh, this, uh, write four about five. No, all the you can take all the questions which is there in your question paper. Okay, okay, if uh, here, what you have to do is that you can fill here this one in the left hand side uh, this one you can fill and here th there is drop down suppose uh, if your question paper has got section a section b section c okay section a uh, drop down is there you can read the what is the first question in that section a first question you can read that question now you are master in bloom's taxonomy so with your knowledge you will be able to identify what is the uh, level of that question what is the level of the question? Suppose if it is uh, defined GST, defined GST, it is a remembering level question. Explain GST, it will be what an understanding level question. So with respect to your uh, knowledge regarding the Bloom's taxonomy, you can select this one. Okay, remembering level. What is the marks? What is the marks? You can enter the marks here. The first two is drop down. Again, the second question. So this question is should be entered with respect to the question paper that you are selecting isn't it so likewise you can uh, answer if it is a understanding question two marks now i am taking uh there, there may be four or five questions you can put it like that uh, a b part question a, a b part question a b part question is an application level question five marks Again, another B part question. You read the question, you will be able to understand what is the B part question. Uh, suppose if it is an analytical level question, five marks. Okay. So here, this is an automated sheet. What you have to do is that you can just uh, uh, identify the section, uh, read the question. You have to identify what is the level of the question and the corresponding marks. So here you will be getting 
uh, you don't do anything over here it is an automated sheet so here you have understood that okay 14 percentage of question is from remembering level 14 percent from understanding level 36 from un, uh, applying level and 36 from analytical level there is a graphical representations there and this is an automated sheet uh, it has says that uh, 64 percentage is from lower order thinking skills lower order thinking means skill means the first three levels together is 64 and uh, uh, what is this 36 percent from higher order thinking skills and what is this the question paper is highly populated with lower order thinking skills isn't it suppose if i am uh, just giving uh, this uh, uh, analyzing if i'm giving it uh, uh, 20 marks 20 marks what is it analyzing question percentage of marks is 69 percentage 69 percentage isn't it and here we could say that higher order question scale is this so this has changed the question paper is highly populated with higher order uh, higher order thinking skills isn't it suppose if, suppose if i am changing this into and sub so you can just pull it a little more down okay so what is this okay higher order thinking skills 48 and other uh, 52 so the question paper is balanced question paper with sufficient representations from hot and lots isn't it some sometimes uh, 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 this is a uh, uh, this uh, the, the a, a text format some uh, sometimes you, you have to pull it down uh, then only you may be getting it uh, the entire thing and here you can write your observations what do you think about the question paper? Does your question paper needs any improvisation? That is, uh, on the basis of this analysis, on the basis of this analysis, yeah, you can just uh, make your uh, justifications, your evaluation regarding the question paper here. Okay. So, uh, uh, the, here uh, you can write uh, the year, the semester, uh, the program name, as well as the course name. Program name, if you write the program name, okay, BCOM, uh, what is uh, marketing, uh, uh, or... Uh, uh, BCA operational research uh, year semester you can put it like this and you can save it and then you can submit it uh, in your LMS so in your LMS uh, uh, these activities uh, uh, you can download these things from your LMS you can complete it save it in your laptop uh, and then you can upload it into your uh, LMS so that is uh, regarding the your uh, assignment uh, that is uh, the task related to this one so now I think uh, let me stop the sharing uh, and now the platform is open for uh, uh, any uh, queries. So I, I'm just uh, uh, giving it to Raki. Uh, Raki is the moderator. Raki, you can take the questions and you can give it to me so that we can uh, just uh, have some reflections or uh, clarifications regarding any points that you're having difficulty. Yes, sir. Sure. So, those who have any questions to clarify, uh, please enter it in the chat. Also, uh, when you go to the LMS, obviously, I've told that there is a forum. Uh, so, Kia, may, try to make that forum live. We'll be also visiting uh, this forum uh, when, uh, time, uh, at times. Uh, so, we'll be uh, putting our own remarks. Uh, and uh, as you told that, learning becomes... Uh, uh, progress well when we collaborate because we are all uh, teachers who are working in the same domains. So uh, when you uh, collaborate your experiences uh, to the others, uh, peer interactions are when uh, when it becomes, you will be learning a lot of things. You will be gaining a lot of things. So there are two forums there. One to share the different AI tools that you're using and the other uh, for discussing and doubts. So that is very important. Sometimes when you're working uh, with LMS only, you may be finding doubt. So uh, you can post it there. We'll be uh, giving you uh, this, uh, uh, our, uh, our remarks as well as the others also could come in. We can collaborate and make things good. Uh, sir, there is a question regarding the uh, activity, I guess. Uh, the what, question is, uh, what level can be set with MCQ 1 or 2 marks? So, uh, for a multiple level questions, uh, normally uh, it could be a conceptual level question. Sometimes if the MCQ can be uh, applied at an application level, suppose if you are giving a, a, a question, 
uh, which needs some calculations or application of the knowledge to find the answer, it could be uh, an application level uh, question uh, could be there. Or uh, uh, this uh, normally uh, K1, K2 and K3 will be apt for MCQ. For uh, evaluation level question, the MCQ will not be compatible because uh, you have to put your justification, then only evaluation be, will become strong. So first three uh, levels uh, will be better. Okay, uh, there is another question. Uh, can a question have two K levels, like define microorganisms and explain their importance in the day-to-day -day life? Okay, uh, because I, as I told that, learning happens in a continuum. So you can uh, put uh, a K1 question, uh, that is a remembering level question, and when it progresses to uh, understanding level, what it happens, we don't say that, uh, we will say that it is understanding level. When you reach uh, uh, this uh, degree level, we don't say that plus two. Plus two degree, we won't say. Only after completing plus two, we'll be uh, reaching degree. Just like that, only after completing uh, understanding level, we progress to uh, 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 this knowledge level, we follow, uh, reach understanding level. So when you put a question uh, together with this, combine this together, uh, we can put consider that question as an understanding level. Because the learning ha happens in a continuum. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, this is a question. The marks which we are putting will be the one which is given in the question paper, test and marks. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Because we want to identify what percentage of marks, uh, what percentage of questions. Percentage means in the sense, what percentage of marks the students score from an understanding level question? What percentage of marks the students are uh, uh, scoring from an application level question? Just to get a distribution of marks with respect to uh, the different levels. So marks that you are uh, giving in the uh, question paper should be uh, identified there, should be written in that uh, task. Okay, uh, one more question. If the question is based on the mathematical expression and the students have to solve the problematic question, what level should be used? Uh, is it K3? Obviously, uh, actually, the solution, if the if it is not uh, direct, that is direct application or direct substitutions, we can give it an understanding. Suppose if the students have to make some, uh, that is, uh, uh, connect two, three concepts together and apply, then you can give it as uh, K3. Actually, application level uh, is uh, said that. Uh, that is uh, applying that knowledge in some unfamiliar situations. Unfamiliarity means not direct. Some uh, that is uh, uh, unfamiliarity or uh, some direct application, uh, it will be better to give it as understanding level. Okay, I think I am answered. Uh, okay. Uh... Another question, do we have to upload the question paper, which we will no, no, analyze? No, no, no. The thing is that uh, actually uh, this is a task which uh, is given to you. Uh, one, to make an, uh, uh, that is an app, this is evaluation level of Bloom's taxonomy, analytical and evaluation level of Bloom's taxonomy. Second, this is a mirror to identify what was the level of the question paper that we are handling so far. So these reflections, these realizations will help you to identify that uh, is this uh, is this question paper or type of question paper is adequate or should we have to move ahead? Because if you because I, it is said that uh, assessment is an engine that drives the quality of that uh, education institution. So uh, if you have better uh, question paper and better assessment tool. Uh, better not to make the question paper complicated. Uh, the thing is that the questions that you showcase in the question paper should be of uh, uh, should accommodate questions from all these levels. Then it will be a very good question paper. So just to identify whether the question paper uh, is showing justice to all these levels, just to make a clarity regarding that. So that was the purpose. That was the intention of uh, 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 putting this activity here. So you can just, uh, there is no need to put the question paper. Uh, we have trust in you. Uh, we know that uh, you have, uh, you are the resource persons in your uh, topic. So you can have uh, your analysis and present the question paper. Present uh, that uh, uh, filled up uh, sheet, uh, the Excel file, you can upload it. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess this is the last question. Uh, sometimes an action verb is placed in two different K levels. Uh, like, explain how can we decide its level in question paper? Actually, uh, in a question, uh, 
uh, uh, that action verb uh, which uh, is at the highest level we'll be taking. Because uh, uh, the same thing I've uh, answered. Uh, suppose if you are uh, define and explain comes together, then that question will uh, give showcase the characteristics of an understanding level. So the action level which comes at the highest level uh, could be identified uh, with respect to that particular question. Okay, uh, I guess uh, that is uh, regarding the questions. So some have uh, questions regarding the LMS. So I'll say uh, LMS access has been sent uh, via email this morning to all those who have registered yesterday. Till, uh, yesterday. So for those who have made the payment since last night, LMS access will be provided by tomorrow morning. So kindly wait till uh, tomorrow morning. And also, uh, if you have any queries regarding LMS and LMS access, kindly contact the numbers given in the chat. Uh, I will put it in the chat so that you can contact us. So, so I think there is no much queries we could conclude. I am very happy to be with you. Uh, so we enjoyed our uh, together uh, on Bloom's Taxonomy. And tomorrow we'll be discussing on uh, uh, outcome based uh, education uh, so uh, i'll be with you uh, tomorrow and the last day uh, 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 when uh, uh, the sections on uh, uh, chat gpt and ai tools has been completed uh, i'll be uh, in the final day i'll be there with you to integrate the chat gpt into an ob format so we'll we shall be meeting all the, these uh, days and uh, i'll be visiting the lms also so that we can interact there also so see you tomorrow. Okay. So let me. Uh... Uh, one more thing. Uh, those who are requesting for like, uh, they can also make payment today. So I have uh, given the payment details in the chat. Uh, you can make the payment. So thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we'll meet tomorrow. We for can, your participation uh... and engagement okay. in today's session. So with that, uh, I'd like to bring today's session to a close. Uh, we look forward to reconvening for the next session. Uh, that is tomorrow at the same time at 2 p.m. And the link is safe. So you have this one link for all these seven days. Thank you. Thank you, sir.